So for those of you that have ever had surgery, you'll know that sterility is incredibly important. And that very often starts the night before when you may be uh, sent home with a body wash or a particular hair wash that you have to have so that your whole being is as clean as possible before going into hospital. And certainly there's lots of rules and regulations about you must take your nail polish off and you can't have makeup on. Now in the horse world, it's a little bit more tricky. For a start off, many of the operations may be carried out as an emergency and we certainly can't expect a horse to shave all over or to have bath from head to toe for hexane. So some of the measures are obviously very, very different. We obviously put a nice brush over the horse, get any loose hair, dirt and shavings out. We thoroughly pick out the feet and may also dress the feet so that we can't have any sort of dirt in the knockdown box. Once they come through, however, many of the processes are completely the same. So the surgeon will uh, don a hat and one of these attractive masks. And we will also have completely sterile disposable gowns and surgical gloves. And for certain procedures, they're very often double glove for extra safety. And it's very important that we don't have nail polish flaking off or excess makeup or any, any loose hair underneath the mock cap. And then when it comes to the actual instruments and drapes, they are sterilised in exactly the same way as they would be in a human world. So we use heat sterilisation or sometimes chemical gas sterilisation and all of the products that you can see here, they're put into surgical kits, double bagged, so there is no chance at all of any stray bugs getting into our surgery. So once the horse comes through, we try and replicate the human world. It's just a little bit trickier because our patients aren't quite so well shaven and scrubbed. When anaesthetizing a horse, one of the biggest considerations is the fact that unlike a human, you can't ask them to lie down on a table while you then give them the anaesthetic. So it's incredibly important you have a well padded, safe area in which for this to happen. So this is our Not Done Welts room. It's got lovely thick padded walls and a super padded floor. So as the horse goes down, they cannot injure themselves. At that point, we would pass our endotracheal tube and we would then need to move that fully anaesthetised horse through onto our operating table. Now that's probably a little bit easier said than done without some mechanical help. So what we do is we put hobbles around each of the four limbs which are chained together and then the horse is actually lifted hanging from all four feet using this mechanical voice that can carry up to a tonne and it's manoeuvred in from the knockdown box through onto the table next door. So once the horse comes through for surgery, one thing we need to do is keep the anaesthesia going because our injectable one only lasts for about 20 minutes. So we move to inhalation anaesthesia and we deliver that using an endotracheal tube. Trouble is, we've got every size of horse, from shy horses right down to foals. So we need to be fairly flexible. So this is the sort of endotracheal tube that we would use for a shire, and this is one for a foal or super tiny pony. And basically, these tubes go in through the mouth and down into the trachea, and we can exactly control what horse breathes. So what do we supply them with? Well. It's a mixture of oxygen, and you can see here that we have an oxygen supply to the anaesthetics machine, and the oxygen crosses over a liquid called isofluorane, which then vaporises and forms a gas. And it passes through the machine, and we connect it to the endo to kill the tubes. So one thing it's really important to do is to monitor that horse under anaesthesia and make sure it's happy. And we do that just by looking at simple things like the positioning of the eye and also the respiration rate. Crucially, we also look at the heart. So the same as in human anaesthesia, it's really important we have an ECG machine connected. And here's our ECG machine. 
And it works in a very similar way to humans. So we have these wonderful sticky pads and we have a three-lead system. And we can monitor the heart and look for any irregularities or worries. We also can place um, a little catheter into one of the facial arteries and we can monitor the blood pressure. So there's lots we can do to make sure a horse is safe under our season. So once the horse has come through from the knock down room, obviously it's going to land on the table, but the care of the horse once it's on the table is incredibly important. Horses are not designed to be lying on their backs for long periods of time. And that combined with the fact of lowering the blood pressure when you get anesthetic drugs mean that the muscles along the back can be compromised and crushed. And you can end up with some serious post-operative problems, often referred to as myositis. Now, some of the things we can do is firstly to have an excellent operating table, and we're very lucky at Red Wings to have this uh, amazing table. The table itself is padded, so this whole layer here, actually built, is padded. But we have an additional uh, top layer that's inflatable, again, giving lovely support to the muscles along the horse's back. We use additional supports between the legs to try and take the weight off them. We can use side panels that lift up and you can see how by lifting up the panels you can actually cradle the horse whilst lying on its back, a position known as dorsal recumbency. And also every surgeon is a different height and every horse is a different height so it's really important that the table can be fully controlled so we can position it perfectly for the surgery we're then about to do. So many of you will have heard the term colic. Colic just means abdominal pain. It doesn't actually describe what's going on. Now, in some forms of colic, the treatment involves surgery, and very often it needs to be done as a dire emergency, so the horse is often rapidly taken to the operating theatre. We thought it might be really helpful for you to see the insides of a horse, so we've got a model here, and this is about I suppose the size of maybe a 400 kilo horse, so there really is an awful lot of intestine crammed in that relatively small body. So, working from the front end, a horse, just like a human, has an esophagus, but horses have very long necks. So, in most horses, it can be like a metre and a half in length, possibly even longer. This goes down to a stomach. Now, relative to the size of the horse, I always think the stomach looks quite small, but if it becomes impacted, it can expand to a very large size indeed. And again, that would cause a very serious colic. Moving from the stomach, where digestion starts, is the small intestine. Now, we all think of the small intestine as being quite lengthy in an adult human, but in the horse, we are literally talking metres upon metres upon metres. And so you can quickly tell from the knot I've managed to get this model into that in actual fact it's very easy to cause a lesion. Now the lesions are, are, are of the following type. First of all, you can take the small intestine and the horse can by accident twist the small intestine and that would need rapid intervention. Another lesion that can happen is called intersusception and that's basically like when you put two pairs of socks together in the sock drawer and um, one portion is tucked inside the next and that's known as an intersusception and again that would need surgical cure. Moving on, the small intestine empties into this large structure here. This is known as the cecum. From the cecum you can see that the large colon is very extensive. There is absolutely meters of it, very wide bore intestine. And this too can cause surgical problems. One of the commonest ones being what they call a torsion. And this is where two arms of large colon then become twisted. And again, if that was to happen very quickly, the blood supply to the twisted section of gut is trapped off. And also you get a massive build-up of gas and fluid behind it and this is immensely painful for the horse and he's sorting as quickly as possible. And then finally we move from the colon to 
they're small column, and as you can see, this is where the poop is formed. Again, horses can get into a few um, issues here. You can get twists develop, but more commonly, you can get various forms of impaction occurring in horse throughout the colon, the cecum, and the small colon, and that's just the horse word for constipation. That's your whistle stop tour of colic.